Okay, so we have done with the training part. Now, the leftover things are to predict and do the evaluation of the model. Okay, so let's do the prediction part. Okay, as our model has been fitted out in the data training data, now let's do the prediction. So for prediction, we have our predict function. Okay, uh, let's look into x, what we had in x. Okay, so these were the value for x. So if I want to predict it out for a single value, okay, if you could just recall, so we had something like this, bs3 dot predict. And then inside of this, let's give square braces and let's take any of these values or let's take the value of uh, y x test. Okay. Let's take the value of x test to check out. X test. Yeah. So let's take any of these values. So uh, I'll take the, this value. Copy, paste it out in this. Let's check. So it belongs to zero. Zero is the Septosa class. Okay. So it belongs to the Septosa class. This is how by how you can check it out for any single value. Okay. This is the petal width, length, and again the sepal width, length. Okay. Now let's do it for the complete. X test list that will help us for the evaluation part. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable okay, which will store what it will store. It will store the complete prediction of X uh, X test. Okay, so predict inside of this I will write X test. Okay, and let's check prediction. So here are the complete predictions for uh, our X test data. Okay, there are some uh, some points. Okay, and these are the uh, these are the features, and from that features we are able to predict it out. Now the next thing which we can look into is we can just compare side by side how close they are to each other. So one of the things that I can do is I'll concatenate the prediction part with the Y test. Okay, it will just give me a side by side overview of how closely we are able to predict so we'll do np dot concatenate and then uh, uh, we will be adding concatenating both the predictions and the x test part okay so let's take predictions first of all and let's reshape it okay reshape i will be needing the complete length of predictions predictions comma one okay that's how i have uh, reshaped it and then the same thing i am going to do for white test let's copy it paste it out over here and let's change this to both will be having the same uh, shape so that's fine but let's change it for the clarity x y test and again y test Let's check out. Okay, prediction. Ah, okay, I did a. Okay. okay, let's change the upper part. Hmm. So yeah, we have concatenated it. The first column what we have over here is for the predictions, and the second column that we have is for Y test. Okay. So now we can just compare it out. Y test is the real values that it should be, and predictions are the ones that are predicted from our machine learning model. So it works really good if you see 0, 0, 0. For 0 class, we are predicting really well. Okay. And for mm, some, we have some mistakes also. Okay. But in the whole, if you see, most of the time we are uh, doing a great job. So I think for 0, we have done almost uh, this best one. Okay. This model is very good predictor for the Septosa class. And some places for 1 and 2, we are making a bit of difference. Why is it that? Okay. The difference will be if you could see the data. Okay. So for the 0 class, for the 0 class, always the data was in a place where it is very easy that it is having the highest sepal width and some of the lowest sepal length. Same thing over here that you can see that 
class 1 and 2 are nearby to each other but class 0 has a very different feature and I think that's the easiest way to predict it out. Same thing with when you compare it out with uh, sepal length. Okay. Uh, sorry, petal width. So that's the thing I believe why the zero class is able to predict so nicely. Okay, because it is very much uh, uh, variated from the other two classes. Okay, now that we have completed with this part, let's do the uh, evaluation part. Evaluation. Now, uh, for this, we have the confusion matrix and the classification report. So let's call it from sklearn.matrix import classification report classification report. I think the best one is classification report. Okay, it gives an overview about everything. Classification report and another is confusion matrix. Confusion matrix. Let's check. Okay, everything is just fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print. Oops. I'm going to print first of all the confusion matrix. Let's say confusion matrix. Inside of this, I am going to pass my y test and my predictions. Okay. Same thing. I'm going to print my classification report. Inside of this, I'm going to pass y test and then my predictions. That's uh, there's an invalid syntax. Okay, two commas. Hmm. So zero, one, two. These are the classes. So for zero, you can see that it is doing a really great job. And we have almost for zero is hundred percent precision recall and F one score. For this, for the support, we have thirteen values. And for one and two also, we are doing a great well, a great work. So at the end, we are getting 96% accuracy, which I think we have done a very good job. We are getting 96% accuracy. And we can actually say that our model is 96% accurate in predicting the three classes. So that's how you can evaluate our model. Our model is doing a very great job. Even if you see the confusion matrix, you can analyze that uh, most of the time we are doing a good job. Okay, there are some error points, but that is also completely fine. If you do a bit of hyperparameter tuning, in so once we move into random forest, then we will look into what are the different ways by which we can just create our model. Uh, we can create a better model, okay, which will generalize much better. So that was all about decision tree. In our next video, we are going to look into how we can visualize our decision tree. We have already completed it in uh, decision tree regression part, but uh, if you are okay with it, you can just skip the next video and move into the next part that is of random forest. Okay, so let's catch up in our next video.